How's it going guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Today in this video, I'm going to be doing a review over the Mass Tracker Plus script from the folks over at Memo World. And this is a new script that just came out and it's a very, very handy script because it utilizes the Mass Tracker with an After Effects CC and above. It utilizes those data from the Mass Tracker and actually makes it very, very useful. It can do many, many things with it uh, compared to the built-in functions of the After Effects Mass Tracker and After Effects CC. And this product is very, very similar to the way Mocha Import Plus works, except instead of using Mocha for the tracking, you're using After Effects Mass for the tracking. So it's a very, very similar product. In fact, almost all the features are exactly the same, except again, you use After Effects instead of Mocha. So before I begin, I just want to say that if you want to read the full in-depth review, check out the article over at the Creative Dojo. The link will be down in the video description or the article down below. But basically, this is going to be a quick overview example of what this script does and some of my basic opinions on it. If you want a full review, check out the article down below, which will have a full in-depth list of my opinions, the pros and cons, and everything else that matters. But this is going to be a quick run through on how the script works and some of the things that I think about it right now. So right off the bat, you can see that the script interface is very basic, very clean, very simple, very similar to Mocha Import Plus once again. And the way we start to use the script is to actually create a mask and start tracking the mask normally as if we were using the mask tracker. So here I have a clip that I shot myself actually of the Dallas Museum of Art in the Arts District. It's a pretty cool place and this shot is pretty much a basic handheld shot of me panning across the street and looking at the museum and uh, it's a very simple shot but, but as you can see there's a lot of little micro movements or a lot of micro shaking going on so it's a kind of a, a rumbly shot here now let's say that i wanted to track this dma banner right here so i'm going to go ahead and get my pen tool and select my layer and draw a quick mask around that area that i want to track you know, a rough little mask like this. Now you want to try to avoid using those Bezier curves for the mask and try to keep it, you know, very straight and keep it with the same vertex count. That would really help the track in this case. So here I have a very simple mask. I'll change the mask to none. So we can actually see our mask as well as our footage. And we'll go and right click on the mask and hit track mask. And that will bring up the tracker. And I'm just going to set my method. Now the method is very, very important because although the track may look correct, Mask Tracker Plus needs the appropriate tracking method in order to just actually solve everything correctly. And this is kind of the tricky part of Mass Tracker Plus, knowing what method you need. But in this case, after a few experimentations, I know that I want to use perspective. And I'll go ahead and select the perspective method and go ahead and hit track forward. So right now, this is nothing new. We're just simply tracking the mass using the built-in After Effects Mass Tracker. So as you can see, it seems like we have a pretty good track because our mass is pretty much sticking on top of this DMA uh, banner here. So as you can see, I don't see any issues with this track. It looks pretty good considering all the little micro shakes that we have. And uh, so now this is where we actually use the script. So let's say I wanted to replace this banner. Or I wanted to paint something out or do some edits here. It's kind of hard to do because pretty much what you get in the track is just an animated mass path. You don't really have anything else. You just have the animated mass path. And there's not much you can do with this. You know, you can't really create a null, I don't think, at least not in this uh, version of After Effects. So what you can do is you can actually select the mask and go ahead and hit load. And it's going to load the tracking data from mass one, as you can see here, loads the data. And now all we gotta do is tell Mass Tracker Plus what we want it to do. So we can either move the layer, which pretty much means bring on another layer and apply the transformations to that layer to move with the shot. This is just the standard tracking that you would normally do with a null object. What's really, really cool about Mass Tracker Plus and Mocha Import Plus is the stabilize pre-comp option right here. So I'm gonna select the stabilize pre-comp and I'm just going to duplicate the original footage and go ahead and hit apply. Now Mass Tracker Plus is gonna ask me what pinning effect do I wanna use, the CC power pin or red giant warp corner pin? I wanna use the CC power pin for this case. And Mass Tracker Plus is gonna give us instructions on what to do in this step. So this is a very handy part of Mass Tracker is that the fact that it kinda of tells you what to do if you don't really know what to do. So it's telling us to pretty much align the corner pin data or points to where we want the stabilized pre-comp to be. So right around here is okay. Then go ahead and hit okay. And you're gonna see that nothing changed. But the magic happens in this pre-comp right here. So pretty much what it did was, it took that region right here, stabilized it, and put it into this composition. So this composition is pretty much like a still image in this case. It's very, very stabilized. So whatever you do in this composition, you don't have to worry about the tracking data you don't have to worry about moving or anything or animating anything. It's pretty much like a still frame almost. You can treat it like a still frame so where you can paint things out and add things without worrying about the movement. So as you can see, 
it's a pretty stabilized shot. You know, the DMA sign is not really moving. And as you can see, it's a very stabilized shot so that we can do all of our edits right here. So for a quick example, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the clone stamp tool here and just double click. And I'm gonna show you that the stabilized pre is very, very handy. So I'm just going to remove this DMA sign. So I'm gonna select a smaller diameter here and just sample this area here and just kind of paint over this D and uh, just keep on doing it until we erase this whole thing. And as you can see, it's a very simple process. We're essentially just sampling a clean area and just painting that area over, uh, you know, an area that we don't want to be visible here. So it's a very easy process. And just like that, we erased our sign. And the way I did this is very, very similar to how I would do something in Photoshop, you know, where you have a single frame and you're just painting something away and there's no movement, no tracking that you need to worry about, no linking or parenting to nulls. So basically what I did was I just painted this banner out. If we scrub through the timeline, you can see that since this thing is very, very stabilized and it's not really moving, our painting effect pretty much is pretty good because we don't have to parent it to anything. We don't have to move this painting, uh, you know, someplace else to match with the shot. And this is why a stabilized pre-comp is probably my favorite feature of Mass Tracker Plus because you can work with kind of a stabilized shot and make all your edits right here. And if we go back into the main shot here, as you can see, the DMA sign has been cleaned off. So if I scrub through this, you can see that although we were working in a stabilized pre-comp and we didn't have to worry about any motion, Mass Tracker Plus essentially put that stabilized comp back into the scene and, you know, is distorting it and tracking into the scene without any issues here. So as you can see, our DMA sign is perfectly clean and there's no DMA logo at all and it's perfect. So this is an example of what it can do. And if we wanted to, we can go back into the pre-comp here and simply just create a new text layer and we'll call this dojo. And you know, we'll just move it right around here. You know, I'm not even gonna correct it for perspective or anything. I'm not gonna animate this position of this text layer. I'm not doing anything with it. I'm just creating a normal text layer. I'm gonna slap it on this sign. And you know what? I'll maybe even apply a fast blur to this thing. And we'll just feather it out maybe by 40 or so. And I'm not gonna animate the position. I'm not gonna animate anything. It's just gonna be this normal text layer right here. And if I go back into the composition again, as you can see, we have our dojo text right here in the banner. And if I scrub the timeline, you can see that the dojo moves with the stabilized pre-comp and everything's tracked into place. And I didn't have to animate the text to follow the track. I didn't have to do anything to the text at all. I just slapped it on there and it works. It's very, very cool. Now, just because this is a stabilized pre-comp and we're treating it like a still image, it doesn't mean that it's a still image. We can actually animate this thing. So we'll just animate the text on and off. So we'll move maybe like second in, turn it on. And as you can see, our text will animate on right here. So it's very, very cool. That stabilized pre-comp really, really helps you easily paint out things, add objects, modify that region without having to deal with all that movement and tracking so that we can work in a very stabilized still shot. But then back into our main composition, everything is linked together, everything is tracked together and everything is distorting the way it should. So it's a very, very handy script. And this is probably the best feature of Mass Tracker Plus. I'm gonna show you one more feature and that is the move feature. And this is just the normal tracking, you know, method that you're pretty much used to. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my shot once again. I'm gonna create a new mass. I'm gonna track this DMA sign right here. I'm gonna zoom in maybe 100%. We'll move to the beginning here. And uh, we'll just draw a rough mass around this DMA sign. And we'll change the mode to none. And we'll go to the tracker and we'll just hit uh, track forward using the perspective method. Now, normally for these kind of things, you would use uh, position, scale, rotation. But in this case, I found that perspective works best. So I'm gonna go hit track forward. So we're tracking a second mass, in this case, the red mass right here. And it's just tracking the sign. And we're pretty much done. So now that we have tracked the mass, we'll select the mass and hit load. So it's gonna load mass two now. And let's go ahead and create a new kind of dummy solid here. So I'm gonna create a, you know, a sign. And we'll scale this guy down, you know, and we'll just place it right here as a placeholder, just to kind of see what this does. I'm gonna select the sign and I'm going to hit apply. And what Mass Tracker Plus did was it actually created a null object that's a link to the sign. So if I move through the timeline, you can see that the null object is sticking on to the sign pretty well. So we have a pretty decent track going on. So the null is holding all the information, the 
distortion, all the position scale rotation information. And if you want to track anything into the shot, you simply just parent it to the null object. And this is what's going on right now. The sign layer is actually parented to the null object. And as you can see, if you scroll through the timeline, the solid pretty much moves around with the shot. So it's a very, very cool thing. So one last thing I want to show you is the stabilize function. And it's a very interesting way of stabilizing a shot, pretty much just taking the movement data or the camera shake data, and it's kind of inversing it so that you're kind of inversing the, the movement and the shakiness to kind of stabilize and compensate for that shakiness. So I'm going to select my layer and I'll just do another quick little mass. I'm going to draw a mass around, uh, you know, these area right here, around these little holes here. And uh, I'll set it to none. And I'm going to go to the beginning of the timeline. I'm going to track the uh, position scale rotation and hit track forward. So now that we have our track, let's go and select our mass three and hit load the data. And I'm going to hit stabilize and hit apply. And now it's going to ask us, do we want smooth movements or eliminate movement completely? I want smooth movement, hit OK. And as you can see, if we scrub through our timeline, you can see that our footage is actually going to be rotating, changing the position, changing the scale to kind of give you a smooth motion. And as you can see, it is a little bit smoother. We have reduced uh, camera shaking. And the great part is that it comes with a lot of controls. So as you can see under the stabilization controls, we can actually control the individual position smoothness. So how smooth the position is going to be moving around, uh, how smooth the rotation is going to be, how smooth it's going to scale. Uh, going to be so it's going to smooth that scaling in a little bit. We also have the ability to lock individual axes. So let's say that I didn't want my shot to move up and down. We can actually lock the Y or vertical axes so that our shot doesn't really move up or down. So it's just moving left or right. So we can lock the X, Y. We can also lock the rotation and the scale so the footage won't be scaling up or rotating or anything like that. So it's a very, very interesting way of tracking and stabilizing the shot. And we can actually even increase the zoom percentage so we can actually hide the transparent edges that is occurring right here. So we can just zoom in a little bit and we have a more stabilized shot and you can increase the amount to your likings depending on your shot. So it's a very nice way of stabilizing compared to bringing it into Mocha or using Warp Stabilizer because Warp Stabilizer works pretty well, but it's kind of slow and, uh, you know, it might not be needed if your shot is kind of not too shaky. So this is a great way of doing it. And I recommend doing it this way if your shot is just not too shaky because this method is a lot faster than Warp Stabilizer. One thing I want to clarify is the Stabilize Precomp just to kind of visually show you how it works. So essentially we have our shot right here and then we have a second shot which is our Stabilize Precomp and what it did was it actually kind of masked out that area right here. And again this is our Stabilize Precomp right here and all the distortion and all that stuff is happening because of our SDC power pin. And it's actually tracked and animated into our scene. So that stabilized precomp may be stabilized in the composition, but outside the composition, Mass Tracker Plus is actually distorting and moving this uh, stabilized image around so that it blends in with our scene. And it pretty much overlays on top of the original footage. So you can't even tell. You can't even tell that this is an actual overlay because it, you know, it overlays so well that you don't really notice it. But if I apply a curves effect over the overlay and just decrease the brightness and maybe make it red. You can see what it's doing here. It's just overlaying this red stabilized area on top of the original footage so that anything you do here in this stabilized pre-comp will just be automatically brought in and tracked into the scene properly uh, outside that stabilized pre-comp. So it's a very, very nice way of working. It's very, very handy. As you can see, working with Mass Tracker Plus is very fast. It's very easy to do. And you don't really run into any issues. It works as expected and everything is documented. So if you ever need any help, you can go ahead and click this little button right here and it will actually show you a video tutorial of what the stabilize does or what the move does or what the move mass does. So as you can see, you can do all sorts of track from uh, you know the standard move track where it creates a node with all the information on it or you can do a stabilized pre-con, which is what I usually do and there's a few options for that. And then of course there's a stabilize feature which stabilizes your shot. And these are very handy little features. Now Mass Tracker Plus is only $49.99 and you can get it over at aescripts.com and it's a very, very handy script. And I highly recommend this script if you do any sort of compositing work or any painting work or any tracking work within After Effects because it really makes your life a lot easier. Tracking isn't that great in After Effects as it is. This tool makes it a lot easier and actually utilizes the mass tracker in After Effects very, very well. So if you're a guy that deals a lot with footage, 
I highly recommend this uh, script because it allows you to pretty much tweak, paint over, composite, fix things, and make your trekking work a lot easier. Now, if you're a motion graphics guy, you never really deal with footage, you never really have to composite anything into footage or fix anything in footage, then you can probably get away without having this script. Now, if you have Mocha Import Plus already, then I'm not really sure why you would need to get this script unless you really want to just stay within After Effects and you don't want to switch to Mocha. Honestly, I like Mocha Import Plus better because you get kind of better results using Mocha, although it is a longer process and you're switching applications. But this is a really, really great alternative. If you don't want to use Mocha, but you want to get powerful tracking abilities completely in After Effects. So this is a really great script. I highly recommend it. It works as expected without any issues. And the only thing limiting this script is actually not the script itself or the functionality of the script, but actually how well you can track in After Effects. Now, one last thing I want to mention is that you don't have to use After Effects Mass Tracker to do this. It can be pretty much any animated mask. So you can actually manually animate the mask. You can copy the mask or Mocha. You can use the mask tracker in After Effects. It can be any animated mask in After Effects. And you can load that data into Mask Tracker Plus. That's a really great script. Another great script from Mammo World that really helps your workflow and boosts your workflow dramatically. So check it out, Mass Tracker Plus. For the full review, check out my article down below at thecreativedojo.net. This has just been a quick overview of Mass Tracker Plus and what you can kind of do in my general opinion. So check it out, Mass Tracker Plus. My name is Vincent Wynn from The Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.